Hallelujah! We're here to praise the King. intentionally acknowledging that God is present, that God is good, and he's got some good plans in store for us. God, we worship you, we praise you. You are holy, 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 Lord. You are worthy of all the praise and all the honor and all the glory, God. You never leave, you're always here, but today, God, we intentionally choose to choose you, to acknowledge you, to welcome you into this place. We ask that you invade the spaces of our hearts, God. Let nothing of this world take place where you are supposed to be. Fill us with who you are and only who you are, God. Stir the hearts of your people this morning that need to lay something down at your feet, God. Only you can do what you do, God. We welcome you to do what only you can do, God.
and my story you are heartbreak's not my home but you are you are death is not the end you are you are fear is not my future you are hallelujah sickness is not my story you are you are heartbreak's not my home but you are you are death is not the end you are you are you are yes you are you are you are you are you are you are it's a new It's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. It's a new. We're a new creation. We're new in the blood of We're Jesus. We're a new creation. We're made new by the blood of Jesus. Cause fear is not my future. You are. Sickness is not my story. But you are. It's all you, Jesus. Heartbreak's not my home. You are. Death is not the end, Jesus. But you are, you are. One more time. Fear is not my future. You are. Sickness is not my story. But you are, you are. Heartbreak is not my home. You are, you are. And death is not the end, Jesus, you are. So goodbye to all that's not you. Goodbye to everything that's not you. Thank you, Jesus. So goodbye, fear. Goodbye, guilt. Goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain. Goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon, yes. Goodbye, fear, goodbye, guilt, goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain, goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon. Let's sing that again. Goodbye, fear, goodbye, guilt, goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain. Goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon. It's a new horizon. Goodbye, fear. Goodbye, guilt. Goodbye, shame. Goodbye, pain. Goodbye, grave, it's a new horizon. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Christ is my firm foundation He's the rock on which I stand 
when everything around me is shaken and i've never been more glad that i put my faith in jesus because he's never let me down he's faithful through generations so why would he fail now he won't he won't i've still got joy I've still got joy in chaos and I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I build my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would he fail now? He won't He won't Come on, he won't fail He won't fail Nice and loud He won't fail he won't, he won't. Hallelujah. Rain came when bloom and my house was built on you. I'm safe with you and I'm going to I'm gonna make it through. Yes, I'm gonna make it through. Cause I'm standing strong on you. I'm gonna make it. Yes, I'm gonna make it through. Cause my house, cause my house is built on you. Yes, I'm gonna make it. Yes, I'm gonna make it through. Cause I'm standing strong. Cause I'm standing strong on you. I'm gonna make it. Yes, I'm gonna make it through Cause my house is built Cause my house is built on Christ Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken And I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't He won't He won't fail. He won't. He won't fail. He won't. One more time. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Thank you. I want us to um, I want us to go go back to that bridge. But first, I want to read you some scripture. First Peter five eight. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the grace of God God called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you have suffered for a little while, he will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. I had this picture of the three little pigs who built their houses with straw and dirt. And then this wolf came and he blew their house down, right? Sometimes we build our houses on relationships with people. Sometimes we build our houses on a job or a career. Sometimes it's on words of affirmation and, and acceptance. Sometimes it's a substance problem. Whatever it is, it's usually rooted in fear because we don't realize that we are enough for him. So if the rain comes and the wind blows, those things, they fall apart. Our relationships fall apart. Substances, they show up empty. We fall and we fail again and again and again. But when we are grounded, when your feet can be planted on the solid rock, that is Jesus the enemy will huff and he will puff but he will not blow your house down if you need to reacquaint yourself with that solid rock you come up here as an act of faith and you say I choose to set my feet on the solid rock so that when the rain comes and the wind blows, I am standing strong in you. You, God. Rain came when bloom of my house was built on you. Safe with you, and I'm gonna make it. Rain came, wind blew. Rain came, wind blew. But my house was built on you, and I'm safe with you, and I'm gonna make it. Rain came, wind blew. I'm gonna make it yes I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make it through cuz I'm standing strong I'm standing strong on you I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make it through my house is built on you my house is built on you yes I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make it through I'm standing strong on you I'm standing strong on you I'm gonna make it through, I'm gonna make it Cause my house is built, cause my house is built on Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken And I've never been more glad 
that I put my faith in Jesus because he's never let me down he's faithful through generations so why would he fail now he won hallelujah he won't fail me now He'll never fail me. He will never fail me now. Hallelujah. He will never fail you. Hallelujah to the King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus. done with me yet he's not done with me yet he's not done with me yet there's so much more to this story he's not done with me yet he's not done with me yet He's not done with me yet. There's so much more to this story. He's not done with you yet. He's not done with you yet. He's not done with you yet. There's so much more to this story. deny what the Lord can do who am I to deny what the Lord can do who am I to deny what the Lord can do who am I who am I to deny what the Lord can do God is more God is more than able. Yes, He is. God is more than able. God is more. God is more than able. is more than 
am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Let's just thank Him right now. You are so able, Lord Jesus. You are so able, Jesus. You are so able. So I'm going to just praise you right now, Lord Jesus. I thank you for what you're doing in my life right now, Lord Jesus. Behind the scenes, you are over all, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so good. You are so good, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
you just want it all it out for you because you cannot sort it out on your own in a moment's time all you have to say is go god take it take everything god take everything god take everything god take it all lord jesus take it all i need you god it's so simple, those little bits of words. You just say, take everything, Lord. I need more of you, Lord. You can have it all. You can have it all. Take the 
joy. You can have it all. Take those things I cannot forgive. You Take the wounds that never seem to heal. Take the anxiety I don't even know how to control. Take the depression that keeps me in the darkness. Take away isolation, God. Take away addiction, God.
What a wonderful name it is, the name of Say that again. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 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 It's all in just one name. Freedom joy, peace, forgiveness, all in one name, Jesus, Jesus, you're all I have right now, Jesus, Jesus. it's just me and you, Jesus. Jesus, it's just me and you, you're right beside Jesus. me, Lord Jesus, you're all I have, you're all I want, and we choose to seal every breakthrough that has happened it's so far in this Jesus. room today with the knowledge of who you are, Jesus. God. By declaring that death could not hold you down. And when the veil tore, you silenced that boasting sin and that boasting grave. Now together we sing with the holy angels and all of heaven is roaring. Glory, glory, glory! Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. Now the heaven are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again and you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign and yours is the kingdom yours is Glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is! Nothing can stand against. What a powerful
If you walked in today with chains, they are gone. Bondage of sin is gone in the name of Jesus. Because, see, the next part of this song says that there is an army rising up. And we are going to be united in this front. A united army rising up. It doesn't mean that you have to stand if you can't stand. But I do want you to be linking arms, linking hands. I want us to start linking from one end of the room to the other. You grab someone's hand. And we're going to rise them up together. And we're going to declare that today you, in this Jesus. church, Thank you, Jesus. there is an army rising Thank up. You, Jesus. Thank and we're going to break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. There's an army. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. We'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. We break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah! Break every chain, break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. Let's rise up one more time, church. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. We break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, we do. We break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. You are the chain breaker, Jesus. We break. You are the chain breaker, Jesus. Break every. You are the way maker, Jesus. You are the hurt healer, Jesus. You know, I was, uh, as I'm sitting here, I said, Lord, this is amazing. Lord, you're amazing. And, and it's what I, what I see, what I hear. And yet there's so much more going on that I don't see. And that I don't hear. But you do. Yeah. 
you do. You do. Now stay open. You know, that's what we always say, open. God's changing our lives. And other people will tell you different. But God always speaks the truth. He has a mad crush on you today. <laughs> we sang about the veil was ripped and people talk about now we have access to God because the veil was ripped. That's not how I picture it. I see God on the other side of that veil. And when the veil was torn, I see him ripping through it, coming down to me. I'm here! I'm here. I'm coming after you. I've been waiting. Come on. Come on. You don't need to be afraid of God today. You don't need to be afraid of His Spirit. All you need to do is stay open to the Spirit of the living God. All you need to do is say yes, Lord. Come on, let me you say yes, Lord. 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 Come on, there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Will you say yes right now? There's an army. Will you be yes? Say yes. I'm a part of your army, oh God. There's an army. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, that's what we'll do. We'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. We'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's put an amen. Let's put an amen on everything God has said and done together. Come on now. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, give a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> right before you're seated turn to two or three people sitting around you and let them know they look a whole lot better now than when they first came in this morning Woo! Woo! that's right don't be scared don't be scared <laughs> yeah Woo! Bueno esto. This is good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Alabado sea el nombre de Cristo. Praise be the name of Jesus. Woo! Oh yeah. <laughs> you can't be seated. You can't be seated. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Welcome to Life Church. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and This church is named after Jesus, the life. We love to say if you're visiting online or whether you're visiting for the first time or maybe even the second.
This is where people come back to life. And only Jesus can do that for you. He really does have a mad crush on you. Nobody will love you the way that he loves you. <laughs> Nobody will put up with you the way that he puts up with you. <laughs> Come on, tell the truth and shame El Diablo. His love is unconditional. His mission of mercy that he made to rescue us. Don't never be another one like that until he comes back to rapture his church. He is coming back. Brother Robert preached it up yesterday about the second coming of Christ and the rapture. The brother said, get right or get left. I'm going to take a quick look around the room. I can't. I might peek back there in the other room. I got to see who's back there. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey, look. Oh, hey, man. All the way back around the door. I just wanted to take a look. I got something to say to you guys today. Hey, God bless you, young man. Extend your hands this way. And Robert, right? Oh, what's your name? Joaquin. Joaquin, this hands. He says, I've got neuropathy and I need the Lord to heal my nerves. How many of you believe God can do that? Brother, can you give me the anointing oil? It's right up there on that desk. Thank you, Father, I thank you for walking. Thank you, Jesus. He said it was here last week. Something brought him back. I believe that's you. Lord, you said if any are sick among us, they were called on the elders of the church. And we, the elders, were to lay hands, anoint with all, lay the hands on, and pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith will make him whole. Let it be so for Joaquin today. And let it ricochet. Let the, that, that man, let this healing that's taken place in Joaquin's nerves and in his body let it come out. Let it flow. You said that out of us would flow rivers of living water. Those are healing waters, Lord. And let them start from this young man. Not only bring healing in his body, but God let a wave of healing flow to this house today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, hey, the reason I went around, I just want to make sure, you know, I like to tell the truth. I, I want to look around and catch the people over there. I can't see you on the internet, but I want to make sure that you, I want, yes. You all look a whole lot better now than when you first came in. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. You know, there's a story in the Bible when, uh, was it Acts chapter 8 I think it, it was with Stephen they were ready to stone him not for doing wrong but for doing right for preaching the gospel but it said he looked up and what the people around him saw they said his face was like the face of an angel.
That's what I see today. Devil will say, Tafeito, you look ugly. You look. Yeah, that's what he does. But the Father says, You're beautiful. The Father says, He created you in His image. Read Genesis. He says, He created you, Liz, in His image. And in his image did he create Liz. Receive that. I sense God's presence powerfully today. I missed y'all last week. Uh, Pastor and I, we were in San Diego visiting Adam. He said, tell y'all hello. Those of you, my, my son Adam is in Team Challenge. <laughs> He's been there two months. And he looks like an angel. Oh, his face. Not that he, Mama always said he looked like an angel. But now, now Dad's saying he looked like an angel too. And God's already done some really cool and amazing things. Stay open because this is just like, <laughs> we're just getting started. I've seen some of you people coming back recently. You know, we always, with the pastors and leaders recently, man, I read a passage of scripture where Jesus said, well, first that one of the disciples said, come and see. And I can tell a lot of y'all are saying that to your friends and family. Come and see. It's beautiful what God's doing in your life. I see you learning. I see you growing. I see your families growing closer together. The heart of the gospel is change. Today we heard chains fall. I don't know who does the cleaning in the church, but do a good sweeping today. Get those things out of here. Sakala! Listen, if you're, a, <laughs> if, if you're a guest today or if you haven't filled out, uh, Sheila, you want to get ready to come on up here. If you're a guest today and you haven't filled out a connection card, man, we upgraded our gift bags. Uh, thanks to Brenda and Daniel and Adobe. Where did I see Daniel? Where are you at? He might be out there near the, near, oh, he's back there near the, the, the uh, connection table. Fill out one of those cards. Listen, we want to connect. Pastor Eva and I want to connect with you. You know, we don't want this to just be a drive-by. It's not a drive-by church. We want you to come back. We say and celebrate recovery. Don't stop coming until the miracle happens. But in the church, we just say, don't stop coming. <laughs> Because miracles happen every day. Come on, let me turn to the person next to you and say, miracles happen every day. Miracles happen every day. Y'all feeling good right now? You sense God's presence? Give him a hand of praise. And Sheila's going to take up God's tithe and our offerings. And before you do, Sheila, I just want to let everybody know that uh, we're going to be taking up a second offering a little later. Actually, it's our... Uh, uh, we haven't had a missionary here uh, since the last time Pastor Dorothy was here, and that's been how many years, Pastor? Three years. So I know we're going we gonna to take up. We got, we got a big offering to take up a little bit later. For the glory of God. I know y'all have been saving up. Three years? <laughs> Woo! Oh, y'all are feeling it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so, I'm doing the offering. <laughs> um, like Pastor said, there's connect cards on your seats. If you guys can fill them out. Um, there's prayer requests on the other side. 
So if you guys have a prayer request, just put them in the offering box and the envelopes. Um, we do have a QR code for online giving. And um, if you're a first time guest, I wanna welcome you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a great morning to be here. <laughs> so my devotion is, um, tithing is kind of like pruning trees and flowers. It makes them grow even better than the next season. By cutting off part of our income and time to bless other people, gratefulness sprouts up in our spirits like mustard seeds. <clears throat> Into huge branches providing shelter. So consistency, consistent tithing clears space for joy to stretch out. So I want to encourage you to keep sowing those seeds through storms. Watch gratitude to God grow and glow until it lights up your whole life. And the scripture I have for you is Malachi 3.10. I am the Lord, all-powerful, and I challenge you to put me to the test. Bring the entire 10% into the storehouse so there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. I will also stop all the locusts from destroying your crops and keeping your vineyards from producing. Everyone of every nation will talk about how I have blessed you and about your wonderful land. I, the Lord, have spoken. Um, ushers, will you come up? So Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Father God. Thank you for your presence. Lord Jesus, it's strong. I feel it real strong. Um, Father God, thank you for everyone that's here today, Father God. And Father, I pray that, that everyone that is here is op stays open to receiving what you have for them. They have ears to hear, Lord God. Father, I pray over the offering right now, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you bless the ones that can give and the ones that can't, Lord God. Because the ones that can't, they give from, we all give from our hearts, Lord Jesus. So I pray that, you, that they accept your challenge. And they give as they can, Father God, no matter what it is. Father, we love you. And I pray, Lord God, that, that the offering that is given in, inside these buckets today, Father God, the baskets, Lord Jesus, that you make it a hundred times fold, Father God, because it's all for your kingdom. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. It's good to be back. I missed all of you. And um, at this moment, we have Juan and Hannah that are going to share an announcement for our BBS. Wait, man, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. I'm so excited about BBS. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was a little like, I, was it, I don't know if everybody else was. I was. So I've been working on the, um, I'm so excited because it's my first time ever doing VBS. And, and my wife came up with the vision, and I was like, babe, you have a vision for a VBS? And I was like, all right, cool. So all of these ideas started coming to me, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be funny, and I'm going to do this. And so I was just like, so I got this, like, expectation for it, too. And we got all these fun things to do, and I just wanted to express my excitement. She's going to tell you the technical stuff right now, but I was just like, I just wanted to run up on the stage and just let you guys know that I'm really excited about it. Here you go. So Vacation Bible School is something I used to like to do as a kid. That's why I wanted to do it. So you come and you usually learn about God, sing songs, sometimes play games, and have fun. So on the first day, we're going to do tie-dye. So we're going to talk about the promise of the rainbow and about Noah and all of that, and we're going to we got some tie-dye shirts for the people that signed up, and then we do have some extras. And then if you didn't sign up, you could still come, but your kid might just end up doing socks if we run out of shirts. So if they have a shirt that they from home that they... Yeah, so we'll sign up, and then, yeah, bring a shirt. If you didn't sign up and at the last minute you want to come and you want your kid, then just bring them a shirt. And we have all the tie-dye stuff, and we have socks, and we also have some shirts. So that's day one. And then on day two, we are going to be decorating cupcakes. We're going to do scriptures about bread of life and things like that. And we're going to decorate cupcakes. And on day three. We're going to talk about how God feeds the spirit. And how we're going to talk about your bread for the body. But man, when you get the bread, you know, I'm going to teach them how God feeds your spirit. I'm 
And then day three is planting seeds. So we're going to do a quick lesson and some music. And that one is like the family day. So the parents, everyone from the church is welcome. Even if you don't have kids, everyone, you're single, married, widowed, whatever your situation is, all are welcome that day. It's family day. We're all family. So if you don't have family, we're your family. So come and we're going to have a potluck. It's at 630. So every day is at 6.30, and it'll probably end at like 8.30-ish, you know? We're all talkers. I talk a lot. My dad talks a lot. Juan talks a lot. So, you know, who knows, you know? But for sure, it starts at 8.30, I mean 6.30 every day. And then the third day, which is the potluck, the church is providing chips and soda. So please do not bring that unless, like, you make, like, agua fresca sandia or something then uh, you're excused or if your nachos got some asada on it we accept that but you know don't don't be bringing no doritos ruffles none of that please um it's not a chip party you know we're trying to eat and hang out and then we're also going to have a little planting station so that you could plant some seeds with your kids or your friends and then take them home if you want to plant them in your garden so we hope to see you all and if you haven't signed up sign up and if you like decorating and you're bored today if you want to stay after service and help us decorate the sanctuary make it like noah's ark and planty tropical oh and on the third day if you got a tropical shirt wear it if not you're still accepted don't make an excuse i don't have a tropical shirt so i can't come no come but if you have a tropical shirt wear it thank you <laughs> you know what i want to say is listen you know how we have that sign on top of the door when we go out? What does it say? We're going where? We're now going into the mission field, right? Listen, this is, the, this is totally set up. It's beautiful. This is the day you want to fill your car with kids. This is find your neighbor's kids. If you don't have your own kids, your, your primos, your nietos, this is everybody. This is it out, you know, just bring them, all right? And you don't have, I, some kids ask me, if my parent didn't sign me up, can I still come? Yes. If you're not signed up, they can still come. If at the last minute your God kids say, Theo, Thea, I want to come, they could come. Everyone, all the kids are welcome. And if there's also a volunteer sign up, so if you want to bring snacks for the kids or just like help us, you know, decorating cupcakes could get wild. You know, we don't want like a sprinkle fight going on. So if you, you know, just are, if you're down to like oversee that, that would be a great help. But yes, after service around 1230 ish, some of us are going to stay after and decorate. Yes. Certain age. Thank you. Yes. It is kindergarten to fifth grade, but the teens are welcome to hang out and help. And they are also, you know, can decorate a cupcake and do tie dye, but they just got to help out. But yeah, the third day, all ages, all ages, the third day and every day is 630. Yes. Okay. Oh, and there's an outreach coming up. Letty told me to plug her outreach coming up, and there's a sign up for that in the back. Amen. A lot going on in the house of the Lord. Hi, sweetheart. Where you been? You look good today. Come on now. Can't even pick up my wife. Holy moly. Attention couples. We have starting in two weeks, a week from Friday, couples ministry. And make sure that you find one of us today after service and get your card so you know the time, the place, and numbers so you can chase us down and get directions and the address. And we're going to have fun. <laughs> we're going to have fun. And I'm going I'm to give you a hint. The first message is about the dust on your car.
We'll drive it through the pool at the park. <laughs> so funny. Oh my goodness. So uh, a little bit about David and I. We met in high school. Yeah. And then we got married. We had um, children, grandchildren. We're still together. And um, my husband said the most beautiful thing to me on Thursday. He said, do you remember that? He said. Yes, I do. This is what I said. I said, sweetheart, I wish I would have known how to treat you when we first got married like I treat you now. We, we want to invite you to come uh, if you're engaged, if you're unmarried. And, what, what? Um, if you're engaged, if you're married, I don't know what's wrong with me, except the holiness of God that comes to this place is just so beautiful, so beautiful. That's what you're feeling if you're feeling a little, wow. Um, David and I don't want to just lead you at couples ministry. We want you to lead, and we want you to encourage one another and to break bread with one another and to make friends and to be encouraged because life is hard. Marriage is hard. Uh, as David said, it's only taken 48 years to... Uh, better late than never. <laughs> better late than never. There's always hope. So um, we do have these handouts and please you're welcome to invite your friends and, and family, but again, uh, married and engaged couples. Um, also, we were encouraged to remind you there in the back, there's a lot going on. There's water baptism signups, child dedication signups, man camp signups. Also, uh, again, hood outreach, and she's asking for signups so she knows who to expect and the helper she needs. So please do that. Uh, and now we have the most wonderful privilege, and it's to have Sammy and Dorothy and Gaho. We are so excited. So on the back wall, uh, right behind, as you go out the door to the, to the left, you will see um, our missionary wall. And we have the world up there, so we support local um, community, and we support world missions. And Sammy and Dorothy are our world missionaries. So now you get to see the face that matches the picture and what we want to encourage you to give every month to them because you're not just influencing your little circle, you're influencing the world. What a, what a blessing we get to partake in. So Sammy and Dorothy. Good morning. Good morning. You all look so beautiful. Well, before I say anything, this is what I had the Lord say, and I'm going to use it as an illustration. Please stand. Just stand here. There is a hunger for the Lord. There is a longing in your hearts. In your hearts. And that applies to everyone. The longing in your heart. And we have the tendency sometimes, because I have reached there with his over. No. God takes us as we long for him. He will take you there. And he stops. And he gives you another dose of hunger. That, that's what I got. Another dose. He's the one that gives the doses. He gives you another dose to hunger for him. To, to just long for him. And then when you get to that stage, he takes you to another level. Another level. 
I believe that's why the scripture says it takes us from glory to glory. It's not just one level of glory, but the levels, there are levels of glory that God takes us. And you have that hunger in you. It takes you from level of glory to another level. And that's what God is saying to this body of Christ. Long for him. Don't, don't let the hunger stop and say, I have reached where I'm supposed to. No, you have not. None of us have arrived, will not arrive yet until Jesus comes. Amen? Or we go to him. So continue to be hungry for God. Continue to taste, thirst for him. Continue to long for him. He has more. He said, come up here. Come up here. And it never ends what he has for us. It never ends what God has for us. So continue to be hungry because he will take you there. And the more he takes us, the more we see ourselves in him. In him. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 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 We are so excited to be here. This is... Um, this is what I call true church. <laughs> this is the real church. We are in church. We are, we are the church in church. Amen. Amen. Amen? The church is not the walls. We are the church. Jesus said, I am building and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. So, so we, we say we are going to church. No, it's the church coming together, gathering. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the alive church. The life church. Amen. And there's so much life in here. I, 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 this is not like any other place I go to. There is so much life in this body. There is so much um, excitement, so much glory, so much peace, so much joy in your lives. Please let it not be something that happens only here. It may, it's not. I don't think so because otherwise you, it, it wouldn't be this fiery. It is a way of life. It is your nature. Amen. This is your nature. Keep it burning. Keep the fire of the Lord burning. Because this is how we reach the world. This is how we touch people. This is how we bring people to Christ. And I want to thank you all. Pastor Henry and Eva. Pastor Dave and Dala. And all of you. I don't, they, 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 uh, thank you so much. Your uh, praise and worship team. You are awesome. You are awesome. Uh, we, are, we don't come to praise God. We are already praisers and worshipers. God made us to worship him. And you bring us to that place. You brought us to that place. Jesus said God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. And so there is that abandonment that we give ourselves, we've laid ourselves just for him. He is all that matters, nothing else. And thank you for your, for your uh, the, uh, allowing your spirit, allowing yourselves to be used to bring us into the presence of God. Making it easy for us. Thank you. God bless you. And continue. You made it easy for us to enter in. God, God, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to see all of you. How many of you know who we are? Okay. How many of you don't know who we are? <laughs> there are a lot more that don't know who we are. Uh, we are Sammy and Dorothy in Gaho. And we are missionaries to... Uh, well, we are from Africa, so sometimes we say, you know, Africa, you can't be, we are missionaries. We are missionaries to Kenya. I left the United States 38 years ago and went to the mission field to Kenya. I've been a missionary for 38 years. And, uh, <laughs> amen. And while I was on the mission field, it was not my nation. But I went there by faith. 
I went there because God said, go there. I could have stayed here. This is the land flowing with milk and honey. I could have been here. But God said, go to Kenya. So I packed up my bag. I had the opportunity to either go to Kenya or go visit Israel. Somebody was paying for me to go to Israel. And the timing was the same. It came at the same time I had to choose to go to Kenya. And I went to Kenya, taught in a Bible school. I met my husband. And we got married. <laughs> and on, in August 24, uh, 25th, we'll be married for 34 years. Yeah. And I've been in the ministry together. We have a Bible school. We're going to show you a, a, a small clip. We have a Bible school, we have a children's home, and we have a church. And then we have the Bible school ministers to many people. People have come from the U.S. to go to that Bible school, from Europe, from uh, um, South America, from other, pa other parts of Africa, attended the India, have come to that Bible school. People that are called in full-time ministry have come there. It's three months. Now it's four months. We've taken it to four months. And they come and they learn how to hear God, how to obey God, how to walk by faith, what righteousness really means. Because we have taken righteousness to think it is my job. It is what I do to gain righteousness from God. It is a free gift of God to us. He made us righteous. We did not make ourselves. Amen? We did not make. He died for us. He who knew no sin was made sin. So that you and I can become the righteousness of God. We cannot pay for it. We cannot earn it. We cannot. There's nothing you and I can do to earn righteousness. So many times we think we have to pay. We've, you know, we have to earn what God has done. He did it for us freely. So we have righteousness, we have faith, we have holiness, we have, we have uh, 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 gifts of the spirit, uh, we have the fear of the Lord. That is one area a lot of people, we fail the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. When we walk in the fear of the Lord, nothing can come and interfere with our lives again. Then we keep that holiness before us. Amen? So, Fear of the Lord. Uh, women in ministry, I come from a part of the world, we don't think women should minister. And God has opened the way that women also come to the Bible school. And men, women, old, young, come to the Bible school. And so we've had the Bible school for 27 years. We just had our 55th graduation in the Bible school. Yes, amen. Amen. And about six years ago, God opened the door for us to go to Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Probably you've heard of, about it in the Central Africa. And uh, we had people come to the Bible. Pastors came to school, and then they wanted to have the school in Congo. And so we started a school there. The school has been so wonderful. We had uh, this last school we had. You, you see a picture of him, the police commissioner, the commander, came to Bible school. A general, a military general's wife had come to Bible school. We get police people come, you know, it is not just those in full-time ministry, but out there in the world that would have effect in the lives of people. So two police people were in the Bible school this time. We had a medical doctor in the school. We have uh, business people in the school. We have people who own schools that came to the Bible school because they want their lives to be changed so that they can change others. We be Amen. We believe that when the leaders are touched, when we reach the leaders, the leaders now, it will trickle down to the people that they are ministering to. So God, God called us to touch the leaders. So that's what we are doing. And 
A few years ago, a lady came to the Bible school from Botswana. And this lady works with the University of Botswana. She took time to come to Bible school. When she sat through the Bible school training and heard the word, the word transformed her. That's what the word does. Transformation makes us new. We become the new creation that God said that we are. So she came to school and she went back. But before she went, she said, I want this school in my country. So she went back and her husband is a businessman. And her husband has land, and he gave us five acres of land. In the, in the nation of Botswana, which is in southern part of Africa. So we started the first training in 2022. And the government wanted more information, so we stopped and reapplied. And they gave us the approval in April of this year. And the certificate that has come to us, the government has given, the certificate has the stamp of the government in the sense that, in the sense that every minister of the gospel must have to attend a Bible school. They want people to, to hear the word, to be learned, to hear, to be grounded in the word of God. Because many people just hear the word, you know, they get born again, and they start preaching. They are called, but they are not grounded. They are not, you know, they haven't sat down to, to be taught, to be trained the word of God. So every pastor has to come to Bible school, and the certificate has the stamp of the government that even if they don't preach, they, don't, they are not pastoring, they can use that certificate and get a job in any government institution. Wow. It's accredited by the government. It's accredited by the government. And then we have a children's home. This children's home catered for uh, children that were on the street, orphans. We started with 25 children sorry, 37 children and boys that came, they sle uh, slept on the street, they ate from the cab uh, garbage, they, they were uh, taking all kinds of stuff. They, they were just kids that didn't have a place to go to and God brought them to us and we were not prepared when they came. We were not planning on having a children's home. We were not planning on doing anything like that they came. So we opened up our home to them, and we put them through a psychological um, rehabilitation for 12 weeks because they've been on the street. They, steal, they, they used to steal and all that. And so we put them through rehabilitation for 12 weeks with a Christian psychologist that came to minister to them for 12 weeks. And after that, we asked them. They, they said they want to go to school. So we went and got a school for, for them. And it was a private school. That means you pay more. You pay for, for it. It's not government school. And God gave us the favor with the school that we took them to. And some of these boys today are lawyers. They are IT students. We have a couple that... Uh, in the U.S. military, serving in Germany. Uh, are, are you getting it? Yeah. They, they, were, they were taken by the U.S. government, and they are serving in the U, U.S. Army, stationed in Europe. God is changing. Some are IT, as I said, some are... Uh, Criminology, computer science. You probably should have come and say this. Yeah. <laughs> so so they, they, are, they were boys that when they first came, uh, you kind of, you want to hug them. They don't hug you. They are just looking at you. And then I'll take their hands. And I will hug them. 
and, and they, they're stiff because they have never had that hug. They've never been told, I love you. You know, that's what Jesus just wants from us. To tell someone how much he loves that person. How much he loves. It doesn't matter whether that person lives on the street, whether that person has been eating out of the trash can, whether whatever situation they are in, we are not to judge them. We are to show them the love of Christ. And I thank God for what you, this body is doing to the community. That you are reaching out to people that others have erased. But God has not erased them. They are valuable to God. They are valuable. Every human being is valuable to God. Jesus died for every human being. He, is, he said we are made in his image and after his likeness. So God works with us to bring us to that place we realize the image of God that is within us and begin to walk according to his likeness. And begin to do things according to his likeness. We've had people say we are working progress. God is working in us. He who began the good work is always faithful to bring it to completion. He has never stopped working in your life and in my life. He will never stop in working in our lives. He is committed to bring us to that place that he intended for us to come into. God is committed to you. God is committed to me. Amen? And when we come into the kingdom, he wants to use us to reach other people, to show them his love. For God so loved the world that he gave, not just for me and you, but the whole world. The whole world. He gave his only begotten son for you and I that we may come to know him. He has not finished with us, but at the same time, he wants us to introduce others to him by showing them his love. By showing them his love. Amen. You know, Democratic Republic of Congo, let me go back there. If you've had on the news, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, um, wars, rebels, killings going on. Even when we were there in, in uh, April to May, we arrived on the 28th of April, and on the third, no, we arrived 23rd of April, 8th of April, and May 3rd, a bomb was thrown in the city, Goma. It's called Goma. A bomb, three bombs were thrown in that city. Seventy-something people died. And people say to us, aren't you afraid of going? Do you know there's no ounce of fear? I don't even think there is a war going on there. Because I know the one who is sending me there, sending us there, he is faithful to take care of us. You, you, I, I've heard people say, oh, I, I, God can send me anywhere but not Africa. Who are you? <laughs> Seriously, who are we? To tell God where to send us and where not to send us. And yet we say, I give you my life. Which life did you give him? A life that you yourself is ordering. He orders our footsteps. If you have ever said that, you need to repent. You need to repent. It is wrong for you to command God and tell him where you want to go. He tells us where we should go. And where he sends you is where the blessings are. We can be here and praying, oh God, do this, oh God, do that. And God is saying, go to Africa. No, I don't want to go to Africa. They will eat me like a monkey. No, we don't eat people. <laughs> we do not eat people. Whatever you have heard, the stories that have been told, you know, it's exaggeration. You watch a lot of Tarzan <laughs> and Jane. 
It's a beautiful continent. Very beautiful continent. The people are loving and caring. So we go to Congo. There is all kinds of things happening. But you get there and you see these people. The hunger and the passion they have for God. It doesn't matter. They can, listen, they meet every day, Monday to Friday, 5.30 a.m. The buildings are full. They come for prayer and worship and the word before they go to work. And they say, we don't know what will happen to us. So I give everything I have to Jesus Christ now. We can say they are not safe. You can say they, are, they, are, they may die tomorrow. They say, we may die tomorrow or any minute as I leave this building. But you know what? I'm giving all to Christ. They are passionate. And I, I, I tell my, I've been in Kenya all these years, 30 some years. But I love going to Congo because I see a passion in people that I don't see where there's no trouble. When people are comfortable, when people are comfortable, <laughs> when people are comfortable, they are in a comfort zone, everything is okay, kind of life. But when you don't know the next minute, the next second, what will happen? You put all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, those people are not just singing it or singing about the trust. They put their trust in Jesus. D did you get what I said? They are not just singing about putting their trust in Jesus. They are examples. They are testimonies of trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you see people with their children carrying their bags. They don't know where they are going. They don't know the next place where they are going to be staying. But when they come in into the house of the Lord, their hearts are poured out. It's like a drink offering to the Lord. A drink offering to the Lord. A drink offering to the Lord. We've got to be passionate about this God. He is not a God made by human hands or thoughts. We have a song we sing. Uh, uh, he feeds me. We, uh, it's not a God we feed. He feeds us. It's not a God we fight. Uh, it's not a God we fight for. He fights for us. He's already fought for us. Amen. He has fought for us. We go into whatever situation with the attitude of victory. We have already won a battle that we are facing. Whatever you'll be facing, he has already won it. He has already won the battle. He has already made you victorious. You are not going into the ring. You are not going into the battle. Oh, I wish I would win. I wish I would win. I wish God. No, no. You go win with the attitude of a winner. An attitude of a winner. So, you know, there's something that, that is different about us. There's something different about us. We are a different breed of people. We are a different kind of people, of the God kind, not of this earthly kind. Yes, we live on the earth. We live right here in the world, but this world has nothing. You may be going through sickness. You may be going through a situation, hardship. Don't let that control your life. Don't let that hold you bondage. Don't let that hold you hostage. You're not an, a hostage. You're not held as a hostage. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. You are the one that is supposed, you know, the, the, early this morning, I woke up praying and I'm thinking, why would I submit to the person that is supposed to be under my feet? How do I submit to someone with my attitude, my action, my words? I submit to the one that is supposed to be under my feet. How does that happen? 
He is supposed to be under my feet. Whatever situation that is, is supposed to be under your feet. Why should you submit to the one that is, is under our feet? And yet the scripture says we are seated together. Seated together. You got to see yourself seated together with the Lord Jesus Christ in heavenly places. In other words, you, you know, when you fly, when you get on the plane, when you're down, the plane has not taken off. Everything looks normal. Is that true? People are normal sizes. Everything, the building. But the moment you take off and you start going and continue to go, everything shrinks. Everything shrinks. Even the things that look big when you're down here, they begin to shrink. They look so tiny, so minute, nothing. And you break through. If you're going on a long journey, like international, you break through the first sky and you continue the cloud. You know, people say, uh, the, the sky is the limit. Uh, 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 uh. The sky is not the limit. You break through, you break through, and you break through. It's like you break through clouds and upon clouds and upon clouds. And you continue to go until you get to a place where the cloud is all. And the plane settles and begins to fly and begin to go. That's where God wants to take us. Maybe I should even change my, that is where God has taken us, but we are not going with him. That's his intention. That is what he wants to do for you and I. That we soar like an eagle. We go beyond, we break barriers that will limit us here on earth, and we go deep where he wants us to go. That's why he tells John, come up, yida. Come up. I want to show you. And it was on the day of the Lord. And when John went up, the revelation came. He wants to take us. He wants to take the church. Let us not stay, stay down here and play what we are playing, whatever it is. Let us keep our eyes up on Jesus Christ and let him take us on his wings and we ride up to the place he wants to. He wants to use everyone in this room. He wants to use all of us. Amen? Amen. I didn't know he would use me. I didn't know he would use me. I never thought. Sometimes I stop and look. <laughs> what? Me? Me? How? I, I was raised, I come from a large family. We both come from large families. But mine is larger than his by one. <laughs> I come from a, a family of 11, and I'm the oldest. He's 10. And I was sickly. I had sickle cell anemia, if you ever. So I never thought I would live past 18. That's what the doctors told my parents. And I never thought I would be used by anything, for anything, let alone by God Almighty. Never thought that. Never. And because of him, I go here, I go there. I am ready, Lord, wherever you want to send me. Wherever he wants to. You... You have no idea the adventures God wants to take us into. You have no idea. And as I said, if you have said, I don't want to go to Africa, they eat people, please cancel that now and say, God, I'm ready for wherever you want to take me. Because you will never leave me nor forsake me. You will never abund abandon me. You will never let me get into harm in any way. You will always keep your eyes on me. He will. He will. Amen? So we are in the continent. It's a continent. Africa is not a country. It's a continent. 
We are in the country, uh, continent of Africa with 52 nations or 54 nations that are in that continent. And it's a beautiful place. There are bad people, there are good people. There are ugly people, there are beautiful people in every part of the world that you go. Amen? Amen. But if you're sent by God, we have a place you can come and visit us. Hello. <laughs> you have a place to stay. I'm, I'm, I'm extending an invitation. And then you will see that we are not, it, it's not that bad. You may not have hamburger, so leave the hamburgers aside. <laughs> leave it here. <laughs> leave the hamburgers before you come. But we can make you tortillas. We have those. We have beans. We have rice. We have all that. We have meat. Everything is organic. Everything we eat is organic. Hello? It sounds good. The, we have, yeah. I, I have avocado trees everywhere that, that produces uh, um, um, avocados. So you come, come. I challenge you. I dare you to take that step of faith and don't stalk yourself out of God's blessings for your life. Amen? Amen. I love you. I'm not the one ministering. I'm just here to share. So I'm going to call on my husband. He's my friend and my husband. <laughs> And, and remember, don't stop where you are today. Longer. Longer. I want more of you, Lord. I want you, Lord. It's you that I want. I don't want anything else. When you decide, say, seek you first the kingdom, everything else will be added. Amen? Amen. I love you. Can you do this, please? Can, let me do. Can you do this? Can you all do this? I love you. Well, praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to thank God for Pastor Henry and Pastor Ethan and Pastor. David and Doug for giving us an opportunity to come back here to actually share the world. Uh, she's from the West, I'm from the East. West Africa, I'm from East Africa. East Africa is, we are different from the West. They are fiery people, very dangerous people. <laughs> In Christ, amen? amen. We are quiet people. We are more quiet, you know, like that. But we love Jesus too. Amen. And uh, uh, I want to, to just thank you for even coming today. For those who have come because you have never met us. I saw a lot of people lifted up their hands uh, that we have never met us. But uh, you will not regret while you can. You will not regret. Uh, I met Pastor Henry and uh, his beautiful wife a few years ago and uh, I, I, we just met once, isn't it? It was only one time in, uh, in Fresno with Pastor Tom at that time and uh, I never got to see you again. <laughs> but I knew you had come here and because that was the, the preparation. But I also have met David and Dalla for a long time. And, uh, and I want to thank God for what he has done Amen. in this congregation. Amen. I see the glory of God. Amen. And I see, I see an answer, an answer to prayer. Amen. I see an answer to prayer. I see an answer to this community. I see a portal where people will come and receive direct from God. Amen. Download spiritual things that God wants them to experience in this time and this hour. 
You are an answer to this community. Amen. You are an answer to this valley. Do not take it for granted that God has given you leaders here that are passionate and are sold out to God. I think that's a weak amen. Right there. amen. I thought you would say amen. 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 A, a passionate for God. They are called of God to start up something new in this valley. Mm -hmm. The other day when we came, uh, we came, um, uh, and we are coming into Fresno, and, and I walked in, uh, we drove in, we did not walk. <laughs> we drove in, <laughs> we drove in. Uh, you know, this guy, he has started me out. I mean, he, he I, I was looking at him and said, I can sit here the whole day and just laugh because of the presence of God in this man's life. And, and um, as we, we came into Fresno, I, I told my wife, I said, you know, there is a presence that used to be in the valley. A presence of God in people's lives. And let me tell you something. In those years, you could walk and feel the vibes of God's glory mm -hmm. in this valley. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. When I walked in here today, in this service, it's back. Amen. It's back. Amen. It's back. And let me tell you something. The reason why I call you a portal is because God does not need thousands. It took only a few foxes that Samson tied their tails together to turn the Philistines' harvest into ashes. All God needs is a few people that have caught the fire to begin to bless this valley with the presence of God. Amen. And I believe, I believe God is doing it in this church. Amen. And I believe you're one of them. Yes. And I believe you're in the right place. Amen. If you came here with this being, what do you call that? With a suspicion. Yeah, suspicion. You look like a, a, an FBI, an FBI, a CIA trying to find out what's going on. You, you're checking out on us. If you came checking out on us here, may you be caught by that fire. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I, 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 I say when I, when I walked in here and we started worship, and I know. I've been here before, but something, something, that thing that you kept on hitting, kept on hitting, kept on hitting, kept on hitting. You know, it says when water begins to drip in a place, it doesn't take a massive blow of water to make a hole. Just a drop at a time. You find a hole on the ground. That drop of prayer, tears, supplication, petitions, authority, taking charge in the spiritual realm. There's a portal that has broken in this valley. And I, if I were you, and they came here, and I'm you know, suspicious, or I'm not sure of what I was supposed to do, I can guarantee you, you are in the right place. You stopped in the right gas station. Amen. And you're going to be filled. Amen. You're going to be filled. And I know gas has gone to $6. <laughs> okay. But in this gas station, Jesus is feeling for free. <laughs> He, he's purely for free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, we are just starting. 
we have not gone in yet. <laughs> We're in that level. <laughs> so, I just want to thank you. First of all, Pastor Henry, Pastor, Pastor David and your wife. <laughs> you guys have taken us as your missionaries. Believed in us. Believed in the vision that God placed in us many years ago. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your resources. Thank you for your prayers. They are making a huge difference. We are in the front line. When we talk about front line, we don't give any opportunity to fear. <laughs> she did not mention that when we land in Congo, the airport is surrounded by military tanks and forces and planes where we land. You see United Nations peacekeepers all around. But we walk there majestically Amen. with our bags on a mission. Where we are in Congo, in Goma, the forces, the, uh, what do you call it, the rebels that are fighting the government are six kilometers from there. Okay. So, <laughs> which is about, six, let's say, it's six miles, which is about 12 kilometers. And they are there, we can hear when they are, boom! But you know what? They are asking, are you not afraid? No. No. When we transform one life, even if that life does not live to be 10 years, in case of any danger, that life will have found eternal life. Amen. Amen. So we cannot afford to just sit and watch that nation go down. We are investing in the lives of those people. Right now, actually, I, 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 I thought I was sitting there and I said, I, should I say all this? I should not say this. But I want to ask you to believe with us. We are believing God for $100,000 to purchase a property where I will show you with this pastor who we are working with. He has a church, but we are renting it, and that's where the Bible school is. And we want 100000 to purchase that same property that we are using. We are selling it so that we can build a Bible school there and the church can begin there. We have also planted another church in another area called Kindle. Kindu is along Congo River, which the first Muslims that came to Congo came through the river Congo. And they established an area called Kindu. Has Muslims. And God has opened one of our graduates in this Bible school, who is a military officer and a pastor, has planted a church there. Amen. This is the kind of people we are dealing with. And li li listen to this. To go to Kindu, there is no road. You have to fly. So we have these small flights. So, and the, the, you know, the, air, the, uh, the airfield are not like the airfield here, tarmac and all that. No, it's ground. <laughs> Just ground. A space they have cleared and the planes land there. This guy goes there plants a church. And he's, you, you should see, they don't have electricity, they don't have anything. They use drums. They don't have this, they use drums to, <laughs> to, to in worship. And it's powerful. So I want you to put that in prayer because God is doing something and where we are in Eastern Congo is the gateway to the move of God in Congo. Is the gateway to the move of God in Congo. Why? Because Congo is the largest 
nation in Africa. It covers from the Atlantic and on the other side there uh, comes all the way to, to, to almost half of the continent bordering Tanzania. So between Congo and the Indian Ocean is Tanzania. So you can see how that country is big. You can get about seven countries out of Congo. Seven other countries out of Congo. So God is working in that nation. It is being attacked a lot, but God is working there. Amen? So I, I, before I share the, the, the word, I want to appreciate every one of you for supporting this man and, and, uh, and, uh, and the women of God that are serving here. And I want to ask you that God will reward you. And again, Pastor, you're welcome to Kenya. And we'll take you to Congo too. And we'll take you to Botswana. So that you can see what God is doing Amen. and what you guys are doing. You may take and say, ah, it's a small thing. No, it's not a small thing. It is transforming lives. Amen. And as my wife, as my wife said, please, come to Kenya. <laughs> you will eat enough. Okay? We have moon cows. <laughs> we have cows. We milk our own cows. We have goats. How many like goats here? <laughs> ah, wonderful. We have our own chicken. We, our eggs. we raise our own eggs. So please come. How many will want to come? Come for a mission. <laughs> pastor, 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 you have lift up your hands so that the pastor can see. Pastor, you see those people? You, you have an army. We sang about an army. You sang about an army? There's an army here. Pastor, please. Please. All right, so, uh, man, what a wonderful move of God. Look, I'm not going to take too much because we're going to hear the word in just a minute. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, you're going to watch a clip first. Those are the kids we have, some of them that we rescued, that's their uniform, their new shoes, they just got new shoes and uniform. This is Ryan, this is uh, Kevin, that is Isaac, that is uh, Mwita, that is Pius, that is Amos, that is Omondi, that is Robert, and that's Boniface, and that's Peterson. And that is Eugene, and that is Brian, and that is Vincent, and that is uh, Miguel. And then this is their birthday. They celebrated birthday in one. And this is their, 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 their school uniform. These are high school kids. They got the same school. This is their barbecue. You can see that's Christmas. Christmas we had a barbecue for them. They're enjoying themselves. This is now the team. Now, this, when you look, they are older boys. Some of those older boys have, are in college. Some of them are doing, they have cotton skills. We have the one standing close to the white. Can you pause? This guy that is back, back a little bit. Can you pause? Pause. It's going very fast, isn't it? Been done. Oh, please. Um, go back. No, he will do it. Re rewind. Rewind. Maybe my English is not... Uh, Rewind, 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 rewind. Right there, right there. Pause there. You see the guy with the cup? 
that guy has scoliosis. We picked him from the street. He's an orphan. He has a scoliosis. When you, you can't see it. Uh, you know, he has a hump. But that guy is a genius. We picked him from the street, cleaned him. Right now, he's a lawyer. He graduated from the U he graduated from university. He's a lawyer in Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, the one that's standing, this, that's our social worker that works with the children's home. She works there with us. She's a manager also. So, and uh, this is during the Christmas. We were doing the barbecue for them. And uh, there are others, but, you know, uh, I will continue explaining. Go now. Aha, uh -huh. this is same Christmas time. This is a going to school. This is their house mother. All of those. That guy, you see, the guy, the tall guy, he's a Mo he was a Muslim. We picked him on the streets and he gave his life to Jesus. And we have raised him. Right now he's working, he's learning a skill. He finished high school. He's learning a skill to be a mason, you know, to, to work like building and all that concrete. And then we have. You see the guy I'm st standing behind him? On the, on the left hand side, there's a guy that is laughing and uh, smiling there. I'm, I'm standing right behind, uh, behind him. That guy is doing computer science in one of the universities in, uh, in Kenya. Okay? And then we have the guy that is standing, uh, um, hmm, one, two, three, four, behind mom behind Pastor Dorothy, that guy is doing arc welding. He's in a, in a college doing welding. He's learning how to weld, like, okay? And then, uh, keep on going. The rest are in high school, junior high, and we grow on crops. That's our farmer there. This is cassava, yucas. You call them yucas here? Yeah, we grow them. Now, this is New Creation Children's Day. You will see a camel. If you've never seen a camel, that's a camel. That's our church there. This is Children's Day. Once or twice a year, we, have, we bring all the kids together in the community, we do an outreach to get them saved, be, you know, spirit filled, and we take with the students that are there in the Bible school, we organize that. This is one of this, those we did this year. Uh, you can see all of those guys, they are students, the ones that are standing in front. You can see that we had 800 kids gathered together. These are students, the Bible school, they are pastors and teachers and all that. You can put on the volume. Okay. <laughs> what we notice, <laughs> it is, is, uh, is very Okay, these are kids <laughs> that have come from locally, in the neighborhood, and okay. out. Um, put the scripture. He says, let's all read this scripture again. Since he wanted to show me how a man be content. What does he say? And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. To all nations. So these wonderful people took the time to proclaim first of all the good news to all of us because we are the nations of God. Amen. 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 That is a, uh, you know, the kids after the service they play. These are Bible school kids in Kenya. How worship you? How worship you? I worship you. 
And uh, we started ministering to the street children in 1996, but we never had thought of having a home for them. We just minister to them, keep, give them food, help them, and all that. But in 2009, after the post-election violence, a lot of kids were on the streets. So the government began to clean the streets. And because we have been ministering to them, they ran to our church. They ran at night, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, when they came, they said, you know, Pastor, you had said you wanted, to, you wanted to help us. We are not going anywhere. You have to give us a place to stay. That's how we established the children's home. And we, we started, and then before that, we were building this hostel for the Bible school. So when they came, and the need that was there, we, 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 God put in our heart that we should not continue to build, but we should take care of the children first until they are doing well. So it has taken us 15 years to come back to this building. So right now we are putting it together. It's a dormitory, it's a hostel, and uh, it's going to, to host uh, most of the students and other people that are, you know, are coming there. Okay, go on. The, where the tanks will be sitting, more tanks for this wing, this side of uh, of the structure of the building. Those are the a different wing. The side, going to be also on this side. So we are making Water. sure that uh, when people are working here, they are safe first, and uh, so that's why we are building this guard around it. These are how the rooms are, we are renovating them. Remember it was a very long stretch. You see all the way. It has been this way for 15 years. And now because some of the students are in college and they are, they are progressing and all that. Yeah? So, yeah. so we are going to be covering plumbing. all this and these put the... the the tiles on this, the commode, the doors are needed here. You need to put the door there. This is the topmost floor. You can see, you need to put ceilings on this. So we have done the piping also the older in each room as the second floor. They stay in some of these rooms. As you can because see, according to the law, you cannot mix the older boys and the Done the roofing. The I mean, so the we separate them. So this is a hostel the door, for the older the boys friends. and also the hostel for the pastors that are coming for training. These are wire for electricity. I don't know why it's taking long today. I think it's <laughs> <laughs>
those are the tanks on the other side. See the flambing, the hallway. I don't know why it's taking too long, but <laughs> it's supposed to be short. I hope you're enjoying it. You can see how we do things out there. And this is Vinny, he's one of the kids. He's just watching what people at the, the workers are doing. That little boy that you saw there, his mom is mentally, it's a mental case. She's been on, sleeping on the street and living on the street. Um, we don't have, back there, they don't have the system where they take people to homes or uh, institutions. Uh, they don't have that. So many people who are crazy are crazy on the street. And somebody got her pregnant and gave, she gave back to that little boy. So when that boy was taken from the uh, by the government and brought to us, he couldn't eat normal food. Oh. So he couldn't eat normal food, and he would be eating for a year or so. He would go into the trash to get food to eat, but now he's normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just talking about Now, this, she's speaking in French and the translation is being made to Swahili. She is a doctor. And she gave the Bible. And her mother actually is also a mental situation. And she was abandoned when she was three years old. And she has grown not knowing her mother. Then she was raised by a stepmother and now she became a doctor. And all these years after she has grown, she sees her mother walking on the streets. And uh, that has always caused problems in her life. So she came to New Creation Bible School and God has transformed her. And she said, in this three months that I've been in New Creation, I've been in, me in medical school for six years and two years of it. But she says, in three months, God has That's why she's testified. Creation. 
God has transformed this is our all right thank you if you could turn off the video thank you that was awesome huh you know I was just like I was like this is this is a part of us we've been supporting these missionaries for years I'm sending it a check consistently for years and years this is a part of us let me say this is a part of us yes the part of us an extension we say our community our valley and what to the world all right so this is the world peace and so i don't think i've taken up a, an offering like this before but i'm going to take it if some of you look a little tired i want you to stand up for real, I want you to stand up. We don't want a sleepy offering, all right? And shake it up. All right, now I want you. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sit down. And hey, that, the, Pastor, the video went a little longer than what we thought, yes. all right? So in a minute after we take up the offering, I want to ask Pastor to come back, give us an exhortation and close us in prayer. Because we want to end at the altar today. That's how we do it here at Life Church. And so we're going to we want to dig deep. He, I'm going to ask you, Pastor, please, a chap to put up our uh, the, sign, the giving thing up there. Because some of us maybe not have come prepared to give in a missions offering. Uh, you could give uh, with your credit card or you could give with your ATM card. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. And just write missions on your check. Or if you want to give here, you know what? Just put it in the missions. And uh, Lord, thank you. I'm so moved today. I'm like, wow. And the things uh, that Pastor Sam spoke over us today, uh, my heart is moved. And they are a portal. Their lives are a portal, God. That has just, uh, uh, heaven has flowed through them to so many and so many different ways, God. The school, the, the Bible school, the bringing the kids in, Lord. And they're in a time of expansion. And Lord, I pray, Lord, uh, we are good, this is a good church, good people, that you would expand our vision today. And God, you know, whatever it was, we put uh, the offering ready to put another zero on it today by faith. Stretch our faith today. These are good people doing a good work. It's good to give. So, Lord, we... Uh, we give this to you so that you could use it, God, through uh, Pastor Sam and Pastor Dorothy and this wonderful ministry. Our missionaries to Kenya and now to Congo, Lord. Amazing. Thank you that you bless so that we can bless. Receive this missionary offering, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Give big, church, give big. To the glory of God. I'm going to ask Pastor Sam to come back. Give us a word of exhortation. Pastor. And then, uh, you know, you do as the Lord leads you today. Come on, let's bless them, right? All right. Guys, you see, we're getting out a little late today. All right. All right. You know, I've been asking God, what should I share in this service? But 
era as I came in first is what I saw God is is made this place a place where people will come and experience it and uh, it's not only that but also as I am looking at what God had put in my heart I walked into the prayer room and I saw the scripture that I was going to use there so I knew I, it has a confirmation and then as uh, we were here the pastor is speaking and I turned to my wife I said She's, he's preaching my son and I said in the mouth of two or three witnesses let the one be confirmed but I can tell you already God has spoken then my wife stands up and she preaches the whole message <laughs> and you see the way we operate we, we, we just listen to God I don't tell her what I'm going to say she dies in I want you to have one confidence that you are the plan of God. You are the whole counsel of God. You are the whole plan of God. You are complete in Christ. You know, you may take that lightly and you may not understand the depth of it. But none of us is here today. None of us came into this universe today. None of us was born of a woman that was a mistake. And none of us is in here today as a believer, a follower of Christ that is half a person or three quarters of a believer or a person. You are a complete plan and purpose of God on the earth. And the day you give your life to Jesus. Jesus did not come to make you something halfway. No, Jesus did it once and for all. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter how your family lived. That is not that which God intended. Because the originality of who you are, its essence is not your mother and your father. Its essence is God himself. And God speaks through his prophet Jeremiah and he says, Before you are conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. So you are known somewhere else before your papa and your mama came together. Your mother and your father are just a conduit to manifest the whole purpose and the counsel and the complete plan of God on the earth and that is you that is you that is you and that's why when you become a child of God Jesus completes the work of 
God in you. They say all legalism, all the accusation, all the bitterness, all the things that you will ever go through today as a believer, they cannot hold you back to the full counsel and the purpose of God for your life. They have no power. They have no authority. What you're going through today, what you're going through today cannot stop what God already has done. God has finished it. God has done it. You know, when Paul is writing the book of Galatians, he speaks to a people that had had an experience with God. An encounter with God. And in Galatians chapter 1, I want us to look at that quickly. And then I read two more scriptures and I will stop there. I will put a comma until next time. <laughs> Amen. And in Galatians, if we can open the book of Galatians, this is Paul writing to a church that has been in the spirit, has experienced the work of God, has experienced the move of God, and he says this in verse 2. Galatians. He says, it's chapter 1, I mean. Paul, an apostle, not from man, no, through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. He's alive. Jesus is alive. And all brethren who are with you, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of of our God and Father. Grace to you. Peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. So Christ has given himself for our sins. He has given himself for our sins. You don't have to give yourself for your sins because your sins have been paid for. Therefore, you can't continue to condemn yourself. You can't allow the world and the things that you did in the past to take hold of who you have become. Who you have become is not who you are. Who you have become is a son of God. You look like your father. You behave like your father. So your salvation is not half made. Your salvation is complete. That's why you are complete in Christ. Because it's Jesus who has taken our sins. It is Jesus who has paid the price. He himself has taken it. He says here, the 
that he might deliver us from this present evil age. How many feel like you need deliverance? How many feel sometimes when you're walking even in the mall or whatever you, you, you feel like there's somebody who needs to be released from something? There is an oppression that is upon people. There is an oppression that is controlling people. But do you know for you, you've been delivered. And you see the deliverance you've received is not for yourself only. But you are delivered so that you can become a conduit that God can use you to transform lives. That God can use you to bring deliverance to others. So when he says that you have been delivered, he says from this evil age, present evil age. Present an evil age. You know, people think that the Antichrist is going to come. The Antichrist has been here longer than you have been. Hello? Hello? The Antichrist has been here longer than you have been. Because if John, the revelator, wrote about the Antichrist, he says the spirit of the Antichrist even is present here now. That means he has been operating for a long time. He is a great grandfather. Oh, great, 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 great. He's gray and old. That spirit is here. And you can see that the present world is full of wickedness. But God is raising up righteousness because it is in righteousness that God exalts his nation and his nation is the church his nation is you and I his nation is you stepping out and do you know why he delivered you? because he wants to use you to show himself present and the evil generation. That's why as a child of God, you need to know there's nothing else you are waiting for Jesus to do. He has done everything and what he has done is complete in you. It's for you to arise and begin to display the character of Christ. You see, the fruit of the Spirit, Pastor, is the character of God. When I see the demonstration of you guys going out and doing outreach and reaching out to people, you are just dispensing the character of God. The character, the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God. What is God? God is love. So when you walk out there as the delivered person in this present and evil age, you bring in the love of God, the character of God. What is that? The completeness of God in you to others. When you show some patience, and endurance in a situation where you feel you are agitated. You, you, you can't take this anymore. I cannot. And then, hold on. Wait a minute. Mm. Mm. But inside of you, because the character of God is in you, you are complete in him. You wait. Because patience is waiting under pressure until God changes the situation. The character of God. 
when we go out there and give and feed the hungry that are there, minister to those people, show them that you care. The character of God. For God so loved that He gave. You're complete. When we do those things, we are actually bringing Christ to people in wholeness. Because some people, the only Christ they will see is you and I. when God was making you that's the Psalms that I saw Psalms 139 you are wonderfully and fearfully made it's not so that you can flex so you are six pack <laughs> and show how beautiful you are out with your catwalk no 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 so that through you the complete work of God the evil world the generation that are getting lost they will look at this art work of God and see the complete work of God in display and they will say I want to be like you you are complete you are complete you are complete. You are complete. And if anybody has ever told you that there's something wrong with you, no! There is something wrong with them. Not you. Do you know why? Because you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, I thank you. For the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters. I want to thank you that every one of us here, you have validated us. That Jesus, when you took that journey to that cross, you are saying in every step, I value you. You are worth it all. I validate you. Your dreams are valid. Your being here is valid. And Father, I thank you for every one of your sons and daughters here. That today, Today, let them know beyond the shadow of doubt that you qualify them, that they are complete in you, and they don't need any superficial addition, they don't need to be religious to qualify, they don't need to do this or that to qualify. And Father, if there's anyone here that is struggling in that, I decree that today that spirit lifts and never returns. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you. You could be here. You could be here. You have not given your life to Jesus. You know, received Him in your heart. Just lift up your hand and I'll pray with you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, you have not received Him. You are not born again. You have not asked Him to be your Lord. Just lift up your hands and I'll pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you stand up, please? Can you stand up? Those who have lifted up their hands, stand up. I'll pray with you. Just don't be afraid. Stand up. It takes a man. It takes to give your life to Jesus. Do you mind if you, I call you? I want to pray with you personally. I, I want to I wanna just pray with you. Sir, please, just come. Just come. Just come, young lady. Just come. your question. You have a father, isn't it? When you did something that your father did not like, did you stop becoming his son? You are still his son. But what did you do later? You say, Papa, I know I messed up. But you know what? I'm sorry. You came back. What did he do? He said, is our father. That is our father. That is what he does. And that's what he's doing this morning. Just lift up your hand. Surrender to him. And I want you to say Jesus. Just, just open your mouth and say Jesus. Say Jesus. I'm yours. Forgive me. From this day. I belong to you. I confess you as the son of God who came in the flesh and suffered, died, was buried, rose from the dead and you are alive today in my life. I receive you now. Help me. Lead me. And from now on, I'm completing you. Amen. Amen. You are complete. 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 You are complete in him. You are complete in him. You are complete. And you can see the guy is smiling, man. He's happy. Look at that. Amen. Amen. You are complete in him. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Forever. 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 Now, I want you to turn around and look at these wonderful people. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Pastors, look at this wonder. These are, these are your sons and daughters now. Hallelujah. 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 Now, now, I want you to listen. I'm going to come this way. I want you to listen. You have a home. This is your home. This is your family. And in family, 
I had a pastor's pastor's daughter is here got married three months ago. Isn't it? Maybe very soon we are going to have a small baby. Huh? A small child or something. <laughs> is it? So what? Because family grow. <laughs> okay? You see that? So you are born again in the kingdom of God. And as a child you begin to grow spiritually. You see that? You are not born with the teeth. Okay? It will be a miracle if you see that you will run away. But, <laughs> but you are born now into the family of God. And this family is where you get your warmth. You get a hug. You see, Papa here came and gave you a hug. You see that? You're going to get hugs from other pastors here. Your, your brothers and sisters, they will love you. There's one guy here. You know, when he hugged me, I, you know, I'm short. Hey. I saw pastor stand up on the, on the chair to hug you. <laughs> Celebrate victories together. You are not alone for today. What's your name? Fernando. <laughs> I know I need to. What's your name? People can greet you on the way out. Is that okay? God bless you, right? What an amazing day. And remember, you are now going into the mission field. God bless you. Hey, listen, next week, don't come alone. Bring somebody. Reach out this week.